Hi guys, Gary Simmons here and welcome to the brand new Game Institute. Now as the Unity game developer and instructor here at the Institute, I've got a really exciting year planned for you guys. And in this video, I'd like to just briefly touch upon some of the projects that I and others have been working on. We've basically got three brand new games coming your way and they're all very cool and fun to play. And over the coming months, we're going to be releasing tons of video tutorials teaching you how each of them was built from scratch, step by step, using Unity 5. So let's take a look at the first one, Balls of Glory. Balls of Glory is a brick breaker game just like the arcade classic Breakout. Now this is much more than just a fancy upgrade of the original Balls of Steel game that I wrote a few years ago for the mobile development channel. Unlike the original Balls of Steel that was basically just based on a single level with an endlessly scrolling wall of bricks, Balls of Glory now has multiple levels that can be unlocked which are spread across multiple themes. Here you can see a level from the Haunted Ruins theme. Here's another one from the Dark City theme. And yet another from the Candyland theme. The themes all have unique graphics, sounds and power-ups, all of which are loaded at runtime in the form of asset bundles. This gives our application the ability to update itself at runtime. In other words, it means that we can update and add more levels to a theme or even release completely new themes into the game without requiring users that have already downloaded our game to re-download the executable. That's right, the game will patch itself with the latest available content, something that I'm sure you're going to want to learn how to do in your own games. Now, we're obviously going to show how the breakout game itself is implemented step by step as I said, but some of the most interesting bits will come when we get into the asset bundle management and the social media integration. As you can see here, Balls of Glory is actually a Facebook Canvas application running in WebGL. It has the ability to update the user's Facebook feeds, to post achievements, and also supports microtransactions for users wishing to purchase in-game upgrades using Facebook Coin. That's right, we even implement an entire storefront in the game itself. This topic will also see us implementing server-side scripts in PHP and communicating with MySQL databases. This kind of stuff can prove very useful to you in lots of your projects, including the next one that I want to show you, which will also make its way onto Facebook eventually at some point in the future. Match Baker is the response to the many hundreds of requests we've had from students over the years asking us to show them how to make a matching game like Candy Crush or Bejeweled Blitz. It seems everybody wants to make that next big killer app and given its larger potential audience appeal, matching games seem to be a pretty good fit. Now of course we couldn't just do any old boy in matching game, oh no. So what we did was we added all sorts of cool additional features that are very common in other online games, things such as research, equipment upgrades and resource management. The matching game revolves around the concept of you running a bakery and receiving orders for various cakes. As the cake is ordered, it is popped into the oven and it begins to bake. Now you need to match the correct ingredients on the board to bake that cake in time. If your matching is too slow though, the oven will begin to overheat, spoiling the cake and causing it to generate less or perhaps even no revenue. As the game progresses, you will see orders coming in thick and fast and you will even have to handle multiple ovens that's multiple matchboards at the same time. With the coin you earn from baking good quality cakes, you can upgrade your ovens, your kitchen, and even research more lucrative recipes to bake. Now, for those of you that have studied with me previously, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently from now on. In my current and future projects, I'm actually going to be recording and releasing development tutorials as I am actually building the game myself for the first time. So you're gonna still get to see all the decisions I make, but perhaps now you'll even see some of the wrong ones that I make and later have to correct. So it's gonna be warts and all coverage of what I go through developing a game. Now that's pretty cool too, as that's a very accurate insight into the process of real game development. Now we intend to deploy Matchmaker beyond the desktop as well, so by the time it's finished, you'll probably be able to play with your friends and family on Facebook or perhaps even on mobile. And again, I'm going to start from the very beginning 
and I'm going to walk you through the complete development process just like we did in the Invasion Earth channel where many of you will have learned to build your first game. Finally, I want to talk about Dead Earth, a zombie-filled survival first-person horror game. Now, during the development of our RPG game, The Rising, it became obvious that many of the systems that we had already developed could be used to create a standalone first-person shooter, so that's exactly what we did. There is so much you are going to learn from this project, I literally don't know where to start. You're going to learn how to use Unity's navigation and pathfinding components to guide your AI characters intelligently around your game world. You're going to learn to use Mechanim to build complex animation state machines for your characters. You're also going to write your own AI behaviours to control the brain and decision making of your characters. A hungry zombie will search for the first dead body and start chowing down. An intelligent zombie will hear a noise and it will start to investigate the source of the sound. Damage is also implemented in our character model. Injure a zombie's leg and he will start to limp more slowly after you. Damage his legs completely and he will start crawling after you. Only a headshot will truly stop them for good. Now our system will also allow us to blend rag dolls with canned animation. Shoot a zombie in the head and watch his rag doll slump to the ground under the influence of physics. But if he hasn't been completely finished off however, you're going to see that ragdoll blend into a recovery animation and watch the zombie climb back up onto his feet and resume his pursuit of you. Dead Earth also supports both melee and ranged weapons. From crowbars, machetes and nail bats, to pistols, shotguns and assault rifles you will learn how to assemble a generic state machine for the player's arms that will allow the rig to operate all of these different weapon types. Furthermore, we will be using animation curves and Unity 5's new animation state behaviours to make sure that the actions in our game are synchronised precisely to those actions played out in our animations. Of course, we're also going to see how to make our environments interactive so that you can open doors so that you can pick up and play digital messages, for example, which further assist the storyline. Dr. Julia Pearson for the Center of Rage Research. So that you can complete mission objectives, such as here, where we see one of the objectives has been to download data from a computer. And of course, as every zombie game must have, we're going to allow you to take a creepy elevator ride to an unknown destination. Now, an inventory system is also a must for any survival game. Dead Earth's inventory GUI is implemented using Unity's new retained mode GUI system. The inventory system allows us to pick up and drop objects and allows us to keep track of such items as ammunition, flashlight batteries and anti-infection pills, basically whatever we decide to put in our backpack. Now, our videos will show how we made this game from the ground up using nothing but assets from Unity's asset store. Now, if all of this sounds interesting to you, then make sure you're subscribed to all of my channels so that you can receive the updates as and when I roll them out. Now, as you can probably tell by me in this video, I'm pretty excited, perhaps even a little overexcited about all of this, but I know that this is going to be Game Institute's best year by a mile, and I'm sure you're going to have such a great time learning all of this with us. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.